In 1905, a scientist, Fritz Schaudin, made one of the most important medical discoveries of the century. He discovered the Spirocheta pallida, the germ of syphilis. Syphilis, the greatest plague of modern times. The positive identification of the syphilis germ was the first great step toward the conquest of this devastating disease. As a mason builds a house stone on stone, so science builds knowledge on knowledge, bit by bit. Only a year after the discovery of the syphilis germ, Bourdais and Wasserman developed and gave the world the first blood test for syphilis. Syphilis could be diagnosed. Then, four years later, in 1910, Paul Ehrlich, in his 606th experiment, produced salvasan, now called arsphenamine. This drug when injected into the body, kills the syphilis germ. Ehrlich's brilliant success crowned the achievements of Schaudin, Bourdais, and Wasserman. Syphilis could be cured, but medical science never satisfied, marches on. Treatment was further improved. In 1922, Levaditi found that bismuth aids in the cure of syphilis. Hundreds of other scientists added to medical knowledge. Until today, the diagnosis and treatment of syphilis are efficient procedures known to physicians everywhere. In spite of the fact that a cure for syphilis has been known for 30 years, syphilis today is one of the most prevalent of serious diseases, a leading cause of sickness and death. In America, more than six million people have syphilis, one in 20. There are a million new cases every year. Why? Certainly its terrible work can be seen everywhere. Syphilis strikes infants, kills thousands. When it does not kill, it may cause blindness, deafness, insanity or deformity. In adults, syphilis is a leading cause of heart disease. It strikes men and women in the prime of life, makes many helpless invalids. Its victims help fill the ever-expanding institutions for the insane. It breaks up homes, causes many divorces. Wars, syphilis kills more than wars. Fires, syphilis costs more than fires, floods or famines. Why? Why, when physicians everywhere can diagnose and treat syphilis, do we permit this pale spiral germ to continue its devastation? The answer is ignorance. Ignorance is the greatest ally of syphilis. The rich are penalized by lack of knowledge as well as the poor. Both suffer because they have not learned the simple hopeful truth about syphilis, that it can be cured and its spread can be prevented. Fortunately, times are changing. Newspapers are aiding the campaign against ignorance. The radio is presenting the facts to millions. Literature is being distributed and read. Speakers are instructing thousands so that they will be able to protect themselves and others from syphilis. Anyone who thinks he has syphilis should go at once to a physician, because only a physician can diagnose syphilis. Early symptoms are sometimes so slight that they may pass unnoticed. 
the disease develops insidiously. Years sometimes elapse before it makes itself known. A knowledge of the patient's history is the first step in diagnosis. Then follows a thorough physical examination. If sores are found, as is often the case in early syphilis, a dark field microscope is used to determine whether or not the germs are present. An essential part of any examination for syphilis is a blood test. The doctor takes a sample of the patient's blood, seals it in a sterile tube and sends it to a laboratory. There the delicate and complicated test is applied. The results are checked and then recorded on individual cards. Only a physician can interpret the results of the test. When syphilis is found, treatment must begin at once. Early treatment is the patient's great hope of recovery. Cases discovered in the early stages can usually be made non-infectious and completely cured. Even in neglected cases, the disease can often be arrested and suffering relieved. Modern treatment usually consists of injections of some form of osphenamine and bismuth, which can be taken without interfering with the patient's daily work. Treatments must be taken regularly and persistently. Injections over a period of a year or longer may be required for permanent results. The patient must also follow the doctor's orders as to food, proper rest and particularly his precautions for protecting the health of others. For syphilis is a catching disease, especially in its early stage. Transmitted nearly always by close body contact, it spreads from man to woman, from woman to man, from husband to wife, and often from mother to unborn child, as it claims its million victims a year. Since any syphilis infection is always linked to one or more others, doctor and patient must cooperate to bring under medical care the person who is spreading infections. For treatment makes syphilis non-infectious. The treatment of a single case may prevent the suffering, disability, and perhaps the death of no one knows how many others. With the medical profession as the spearhead of the attack, the fight against syphilis is well begun. Physicians are more alert than ever to discover and treat infections in all persons under their care. Free clinics, hospitals and health departments provide medical care for those who can afford to pay only small fees or nothing at all. Health agencies contribute by helping to trace infections and by teaching syphilis victims how to prevent the spread of infection. Many states now require that every expectant mother be examined and her blood tested for syphilis, a most important step, for it is one of the miracles of medicine that modern treatment prevents the transmission of syphilis from mother to unborn child. An increasing number of states require that before marriage, both bride and groom have an examination, including a blood test for syphilis. And similar laws are being pushed in other states, for government has found that millions now spent for the support of institutions for victims of syphilis can be saved. Industry, too, is beginning to realize that war against syphilis is tremendously important. Compensation costs, costly accidents, and labor turnover, often chargeable to syphilis, can be reduced, and so many industries are encouraging infected employees to secure treatment. But the work has only begun. There is much to do. Government and citizens have a tremendous task ahead. Schools have a responsibility to teach youth the ways of health, for 75% of all syphilis is contracted before the age of 30. Churches can do much by instilling high ideals. Parents can guide, protect, and instruct growing children. Communities can provide facilities for wholesome play. And communities, too, must enforce laws which protect youth 
from degrading conditions. Yes, there is much to be done, but thanks to medical science, thanks to research workers, physicians, and public health leaders, all of the weapons for a successful war against syphilis are at hand. Syphilis can be diagnosed. It can be made non-infectious. It can be cured. Only one more thing is needed to defeat the germs of syphilis. Knowledge of the facts by every man and woman. With widespread knowledge and with these weapons, America can conquer syphilis in one generation.